you've been searching for a black and white film simulation recipe that you can use for any situation, look no further than Reggie's HP5. Life just hits a little differently in black and white, and with this recipe, I'm confident that you'll see why. This film simulation recipe started out as a black and white complement to my color film simulation recipe, Reggie's Portra. After tweaking and testing it for over two years, I feel like it has evolved into the perfect blend of that black and white film-like character and grain infused with just the right amount of digital pop. Before I walk you through all the settings for Reggie's HP5, I wanted to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. I've actually been using Squarespace for over 10 years now. Their templates and easy to use interface make it incredibly simple to create and maintain a professional looking website without any coding experience necessary. My Squarespace website was an essential part of how I built my photography business. It allowed me to showcase my portfolio, share recent work on my blog, and receive inquiries from potential clients through my contact form. If you're one of those photographers relying on your Instagram profile as the sole place to share your work and build your photography business, I would highly consider making a website on Squarespace. You can visit squarespace.com slash reggiebelasteros to start a free trial and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'm going to walk you through the settings of Reggie's HP5 using the Fujifilm X100V as an example. This camera has the X-Trans 4 sensor and the settings are pretty much exactly the same for the cameras that use the X-Trans 5 sensors like the Fujifilm X-T5. If you'd like to use this film simulation recipe on an older Fujifilm camera, for example a Fujifilm X-T3 or X-T2, just use all the available settings on your camera and ignore the ones that are not available. So for image size, I set my JPEGs to large 3x2 and I set the standard standard for most photographs that I take and that gives me the maximum amount of resolution and quality but if I'm shooting a YouTube thumbnail or something for Instagram stories or an Instagram post I will actually change the aspect ratio to the exact aspect ratio that I need. For example if I'm making a YouTube thumbnail I'll use 16 by 9 or if I'm making an Instagram uh, square post I'll use one by one. And the main reason that I do this is because I want to make sure I get everything right in camera including the composition and the crop. As far as image quality settings go, I do fine plus raw. I'm going to have the fine resolution JPEG for the maximum output and the raw file itself is for two things. First, it's purely for archival purposes. When I do any photo editing, I edit just the JPEGs and the raws are just kind of there for safekeeping just in case at some point down the road, maybe I want to convert the photo to color that I have the color data. And the second reason why I have it is because of Fuji X Raw Studio. If, if you're not familiar with what that software does, it actually lets you hook up your camera to your computer and put the raw file inside and reprocess that raw file with any film simulation settings that you want. For a raw recording, I do lossless compress and the main reason for this is because I want to save space on my camera. You can always do uncompress if you don't really care about space and there is the benefit of it not costing as much CPU overhead to process the photos when you import them and when you load them on your computer. And now the most important part of this film simulation recipe is the film simulation itself. I specifically use Acros and Fujifilm describes Acros as a black and white film simulation with rich details and with sharpness. And for me, I specifically use the red filter as what this does is enhances the overall contrast and it'll darken skies, 
And for me, I feel like it has the specific skin tone rendering that I want in terms of brightness level for that color channel. And when it comes to using the Acros film simulation, one of my favorite things about shooting with a mirrorless camera is the ability to be able to observe kind of like life and the photos and the scenes in front of you in real time in black and white. This really allows you to be able to see light and shadows really clearly. Um, and you can notice shapes and lines in your surroundings. And it helps you really focus and hone in on the specific moments and the motions without the distraction of color. As far as the monochromatic color, I don't really set this to anything, but if you're into kind of like cool tones for your black and white photos or you want to warm it up or you want to do something like sepia tone this is where you would do it for the grain effect i set this to weak and small and the main reason for this first this is supposed to look a little bit like film and i like it being a little bit more gritty and i feel like the fujifilm film simulation algorithm for the grain structure is very organic and the second reason is i don't really like how lightroom adds grain in post because this is a black and white photo color chrome effect is off off, and I also have color chrome effects blue also off. For white balance, I leave this to auto, and as far as the white balance shift, that's all zeroed out as well. For dynamic range, I leave this on auto so that it can adjust on the fly based on the different scene, and then I leave D range priority to off. So next comes the tone curve, and this is where we really get to customize the Acros film simulation. I set the tone curve pretty contrasty, so it's plus two on the highlights and plus two on the shadows. And what you'll find is that when you're exposing images, if your main subject is in shadow and you need to expose the shadows, you will have to kind of overexpose the image just a little bit in terms of giving up on the background a little bit. But where this film simulation recipe really shines is when you have those really harsh lit direct sunlight scenes. Um, you can drop down the highlights so that they're well exposed and everything is nice with shadows and texture. And if you can have your subject look in the correct direction, it can be a very high contrast look. And that is the main reason why I use this film simulation recipe. But don't be mistaken, it also still works indoors, anything in terms of low light or night scenes. You're just going to have to be very mindful about the lighting direction and making sure your subject is actually lit properly. For sharpness, I have this to negative one because zero or anything in the positive direction ends up being a little bit too kind of like digitally like crunchy. And I don't want my photos to look super digital um, because I still want to have a little bit of softness. And if you want to add clarity or sharpness, in post-processing, you can always do that in Lightroom if needed. And the cool thing is because you're dealing with a JPEG and not a RAW, you're not going to have the same kind of like worm effect problems that you have if you were to process a RAW photo in Lightroom from a Fujifilm camera. For noise reduction, I have this set to negative three. As far as Fujifilm cameras go, you never want to put this at zero because even at zero has a baseline noise reduction and it has really negative effects on skin tones and skin texture, just making it look really waxy and not a lot of detail. So I set this to negative three. Next is the clarity. If you've ever used a Fujifilm camera and you felt like it takes a long time to take a photo, the clarity is where that is happening. So for example, I set this to negative three. And if we take a photo, it's gonna take a long time doing this like storing thing. Um, it, it's pretty annoying, but you'll find out that if you go back to your settings and you set to zero, now, if I take a photo, it just takes it instantly. And I really don't understand why Fujifilm cameras are set up this way. I think it's because the clarity has some type of post-processing added to the photo after the fact. So once it takes the photo, it adds the post-processing and that's what you're waiting for, but it delays you in taking a photo. So instead, I set this to zero because I'm a, a wedding and event photographer by trade. So capturing moments and being able to, to photograph on the fly is something that I need to do. Um, if that's not something that's important to you, then don't worry about it. You can add a clarity effect for that different softness or you know crunchiness that you want on your photo but instead for me I actually use a moment cinebloom filter and what a moment cinebloom filter is is actually a diffusion filter and this will add halation to the highlights and bloom the highlights and give an overall softening effect to sharp details and contrast I typically use a 5% diffusion filter at all times and I've actually been kind of like pushing it a little bit to the 10% which will give you a little bit more exaggerated effect and the main thing that you have to figure out is when you 
shoot with a 10% diffusion filter, you have to be very intentional about how you light things because if something is backlit, it might blow out the whole photo, like losing all the contrast and details. The way you fix this is scooting to the left or to the right in order to fix your perspective so that the lighting is directional and you can regain that contrast. And for night photos, I use a 20% diffusion filter for an ultra dreamy look. If you're someone who likes that soft type of look, likes halation in your digital photos, and really wants to mimic that film look, I would invest in a Moment Cinebloom filter or any other type of diffusion filter for your Fujifilm camera as it really completes the look of the JPEGs on Fujifilm without having to cost you that loading time. Long exposure noise reduction, I have that set to on. And for color space, I have this set to sRGB. And then you can go down and save it to a specific slot. I have mine set to C2. And you can name it whatever you like. You can name it HP5, Reggie's HP5, black and white. And with that, my name is Reggie Ballesteros. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, subscribe for more. Be sure to check out this video over here if you want to check out my all-time favorite film simulation recipe, Reggie's Portra. Okay, done.